An African hunting dog is a tough and agile predator. But a pack of hunting dogs is a singular force of nature. They do it with teamwork, strategy, and allegiance. To understand how a collection of canines turns into an elite predatory unit, we'll study the battlefield, dissect the game plan, analyze the moves, revealing how the art of hunting as a team can only come from living as a pack. This is Umfolozi, a game reserve in South Africa. A group of predators is preparing for the hunt. They're called African hunting dogs, or simply wild dogs. They're distant cousins of wolves and domestic canines. Here in the Umfolozi Reserve, the story of one pack is just beginning. They are called the Xi'an Pack. Only a few months ago, a male known as Lightface met up with a female called Roxy. Each brought along a few allies. Now these two are the Alphas, the leaders of a new coalition, 10 dogs strong. They've already developed a strong sense of community, but it's their ability to hunt as a team that will determine if the pack survives. Wild dogs have evolved to chase down prey on the African plains. A lone dog is well equipped for the job. It has keen vision a lean runner's build. And relative to its size, a 30 kilogram dog has a stronger bite than any carnivore on Earth. Its lower jaw is massive compared to other canines. And it's equipped with special shearing molars for stripping meat from bone. Multiply that by five, 10, or even 20 dogs, and it becomes one of the most successful predatory forces on Earth. Hunting as a team means they can take on larger prey and make a kill more often. Few, if any, other predators can match their success. The newly formed Xi'an pack is just beginning to realize its own collective strength. They have to master a difficult battlefield of hills and dense woodlands. It's part of the vast Shishule Umfolozi game reserve. The Umfolozi section spans 600 square kilometers. This is the Xi'an pack's hunting ground. The park sustains populations of elephant, Rhino, Warthog, and Wildebeest. Most importantly, Impala, a kind of antelope, flourish here. The dogs hunt them almost exclusively. But abundant prey attracts other killers. Hyenas, and especially lions. These larger predators can push the dogs off a kill. But they do more than just compete for food. They prey on dogs outright. Over a third of all pups, and as many as one in six adults, die in the jaws of a lion. The 
the Xi'an pack must avoid becoming the hunted while succeeding as hunters. To catch elusive prey and to beat the competition, they have to get creative. We'll see them employ three different attacks. The skirmish, the trap, and the charge. Each tactic is tailored to suit the prey and the terrain it's in. Now the stakes are even higher. Light Phase and Roxy have nine more mouths to feed. At just one month old, the pups already need fresh meat. They're welcome additions to a fragile population. Just 5,000 of their kind survive in all of Africa. Light Phase wears a radio collar so that park rangers can monitor the pack's progress and better understand how they live and how they hunt. At first light, the dogs are ready to hunt. But the new pups make things more difficult. Wild dogs are normally nomadic, but with pups to care for, they have to return to the den every night. And the little ones can't be left alone. Roxy, their mother, is needed on the hunt. So one of the younger females stays behind as puppy sitter. That leaves the pack one hunter short. They move out along the park's dirt road for easier travel, scanning the bush for potential prey. Impala. So far, they are unaware of the dog's approach. Immediately, a silence drops over the pack. But dogs are not stealth hunters like lions. They hunt by chasing. In preparation for the pursuit, they fan out in a skirmish line. Light phase is near the center. Roxy takes up position nearest the road. The other dogs assume places along the line. The ultimate goal is to force one of the Impala to run down the line, outflank it, and close in for the kill. They have learned to follow one another's body language. When Light Phase gets into attack position, they know the game is on. From the center of the battle line, Light Phase launches the strike. The Impala scatter and leap into the air in three meter high arcs. The dogs chase one, then another, but they don't close in for the kill. After a short chase, Light Phase stops, signaling a halt. The Impala's defense is held for now. But the dogs aren't finished yet. As the herd regroups, the pack reforms its skirmish line. And once again, they attack. This time, Light Phase makes a beeline for a young Impala. He and the other dogs chase it toward the road.
ocean even rouses a group of rusting lions. Now the Impala herd has to contend with two predators. Roxy closes in from the road, sealing off the Impala's escape route. Then suddenly, she stops. The dogs again abandon the chase, but this time they don't reform their lines. They return to the road and head for home. This hunt has been called off for good. In the continuing battle of hunter and hunted, the defenders have won this round. What went wrong for the dogs? Perhaps it's better to ask what went right for the antelope. On the park road, the dogs begin the trek back to their den. They appeared to be executing a perfect skirmish hunt, and yet they came up short. Re-examining the hunt will tell us what went wrong. The answer may lie with the Impala's defensive strategy. Did the dogs lose the element of surprise? Just like dogs, Impala benefit from living in a group. Big, wide-set eyes have a broad field of view they keep a lookout in all directions. The result is a defensive perimeter around the Impala herd called a flight zone. If any predator approaches this invisible boundary, the Impala raise the alarm. Most predators will try to sneak inside the flight zone and surprise the antelope. But dogs are different. They were never trying to be stealthy. They know the antelope will flee and that they'll have to give chase. So surprise was never a factor. Then maybe the dogs were just worn out by a faster opponent. When the dogs charge, the Impala scatter to confuse the predators. And a healthy adult Impala can usually outrun a dog. They have evolved without collarbones. This adaptation increases the rotation of their shoulders. It gives their front legs an even longer reach and allows them to cover more ground in a stride. A single bound can carry them nine meters. and the Impala pull out another trick. Those high arcing jumps. It doesn't help them get away any faster, but it may send a message to the dogs. It advertises their vigor, saying, I'm too fast for you. It works well for the strong Impala, but it can betray the weaker ones. Light Phase was able to pinpoint a young Impala who didn't leap, basically saying, come and get me. So the Impala's evasive tactics may have actually helped the dogs select a target. In the first wave of the skirmish, that's all they needed to do. But on the second wave, they were in it for the kill. The skirmish line folds in half behind the Impala. Now there are dogs flanking it on both sides. Success is moments away. So why couldn't the dogs finish the job? This is the culprit. The chase has taken them straight into lion territory.
The moment the big cat appears, the dogs stop being predators. Now they're prey. And this one's not alone. Luckily, the lion appears to have no interest in hunting, impala or dog. But the dogs take no chances. For the impala, two wrongs have made a right. For the dogs, there is the hungry march back to the den. At home, they have more than their own appetites to consider. The pups are waiting. Missing a daily meal brings the threat of dehydration and stunted growth. But the hunters have failed. Although they are the offspring of Roxy and Lightface, the entire pack is concerned for their well-being. Every dog will help feed the pups, and every dog will risk its life to protect them. Even so, half these pups will probably not reach adulthood. Hunger is a serious threat, but there are others more sinister. Not lions, but something nearly as deadly. Hyenas. It's not the adult dogs they're after. They're looking for a chance to rush in and snatch a helpless pup. These cooperative hunters are just as unified in the defense of their family. Hyenas don't stand a chance against ten dogs, and they know it. The pups are still hungry. The Xi'an pack must hunt again, and soon. The next morning at Umfalozi, the Xi'an pack is restless. They're used to eating every day. After yesterday's failure, adults and pups alike are desperate for a meal. They seek out their usual prey once more, but the Impala have moved on. They have to be on the lookout for more readily available prey and change their strategy when necessary. They drop into a densely wooded valley near the den. But what they initially find is a little more than they can handle. Black rhino are notoriously bad-tempered and it's covered in virtual body armor. Skin two centimeters thick. They seem reluctant to leave it alone. The rhino bears wounds, perhaps from parasites or an encounter with a lion. The dogs may sense it's in a weakened state. Its nervous reaction triggers the dog's prey response. They're predisposed to give chase to anything that flees. But they'll get nowhere with this opponent. Finally, common sense prevails.
Light phase leads them deeper into the thick woods. They're after different prey in different terrain. This calls for a new strategy. One mid-ranking male breaks away from the pack and heads for slightly higher ground. For the first phase of this hunt, he is the scout. He searches for a creature that relies on camouflage. A slight breeze moving up the valley trips his sensitive nose. It's a clue that he's close to what he's looking for. Niala. Large forest antelope are hiding among the trees. They are related to impala, but with a critical difference in behavior. They're usually found in small groups, but males are often solitary, so they lack the impala's extensive surveillance system. The scout's role shifts. He is now the driver, in charge of flushing out the hidden Niala. The rest of the pack waits at the bottom of the hill. The lone dog must locate the prey and drive it down the hill toward the others and into the trap. The dog scans the shadows and catches a flash of motion. It's just a vervet monkey chattering in the treetops. Nothing the dog can chase. Then, a target. A lone male Niala. But instantly, it senses the danger and spooks. The dog is caught in the wrong position and the Niala flees deeper into the forest. Instead of running downhill toward the waiting pack, it's running across the hillside, away from the pack, and toward freedom. For a moment, it looks as if it might escape, but the dogs aren't so easily fooled. As if driven by intuition, they swing to the left as a single unit. In a dense thicket, they intercept the prey. Success. The dogs have turned defeat into victory. It took a perfect formula of instinct, skill, and strategy. In near silence, the dogs lay into their meal, one that almost got away. How was the Niala nearly able to escape? And how did the dogs manage to regain the upper hand? At the outset, the odds favored the Niala. Dogs hunt mainly with sight. They're good at pinpointing moving prey in open ground. But they're colorblind, so they're less adept at picking out stationary, camouflaged prey. So the scout failed to spot the Niala. But somehow, the Niala got wind of the dog. There was no herd to warn it. So how did it know? It got a little help from a friend. Vervet monkeys live in social groups, too. When it chattered from the treetop, 
It was warning its fellow monkeys of the predator. The Niala reacted to the monkey's alarm and got a jump on the dog. A lucky break. But the dogs below have a secret weapon. Sight is their primary sense, but they're also armed with a great pair of ears. They're shaped like huge funnels for capturing distant sounds at frequencies twice as high as a human can hear. 19 different muscles fire independently to swivel the ears like twin radar dishes and pinpoint the prey's movement. They can hear the Niala changing course and they make a critical decision. Two of the dogs shift to the left, homing in on the sound. The others tune into the body language of their pack mates and follow. They maintain their battle line, but they swing it to the left as a unit, like a net to catch the charging prey. Experience hunting together enabled them to adjust as the game board changed. And they reap the reward. Dogs usually kill their prey much faster than lions do. And unlike lions and many other pack predators, they seldom bicker over who gets what. Dining is swift, orderly, and quiet. There's good reason to be so single-minded. The hyenas are back, and in greater numbers. They've been following the dogs, hoping to steal the meal. Wild dogs valiantly defend their prize from larger foes. But it takes four dogs to keep just one hyena at bay. And hyenas are clever and persistent. Luckily for the dogs, they've already consumed most of the carcass. It's not worth risking an all-out fight. So they surrender the scraps and head back toward the den. But the short battle has taken a toll. One of the dogs was injured in the brawl. For a lone predator, this could be a death sentence. But the pack will feed and care for her until she heals. Their bond is that strong. At the den, the hunters are greeted by an enthusiastic horde. The pups make distinct chirping sounds and lick the mouths of the adults. This triggers an instinctive reaction. The adults regurgitate partially digested meat, the equivalent of puppy chow. With bellies full, the pack can spend the afternoon resting in the shade. Impala herd back in the neighborhood. They're eager for another try. But now the injured female also stays behind with the sitter. The pack is down to just eight hunters, with even more mouths to feed at home. Success today is critical. 
the terrain presents a different battlefield than either of their previous hunts. It's more open, with less dense woodland. The Impala have a clear view in all directions, and plenty of room to run. This calls for a different attack strategy. It's the one that African wild dogs were born for. Nearby, the Impala are gripped by a powerful force. <laughs> the rutting season has begun. Males are laying claim to the females. Breeding rights are decided in a head-on challenge. Horns are sharp, but layers of extra thick skin protect their head and neck from stab wounds. The victor must work full time to keep his females away from other males. makes the herd less cohesive and less vigilant. And wild dogs know how to exploit any weakness. Light phase leads the Xi'an pack single file toward a small splinter herd. This will be no short skirmish. The charge is a lengthy, high-endurance assault. The Impala are on flat land near a stream bed. With the ground more open and the herd spread out, the dogs widen their battle line. The plan is to harass the herd and get them on the run. Then they must select one individual, isolate it, surround it, and bring it down. Success will require perseverance, cooperation, and perfect timing. The dogs start slowly, conserving energy, closing in. Until close becomes too close for comfort. is on. For a while, the dogs don't appear to be hunting at all, just running with the herd. But they're testing and assessing each opponent's strength. For a moment, they follow a large male, then a small and swift female. In each case, the Impalas elude their pursuers. Then, one of the dogs sets its sights on a big male impala. Roxy picks up the pursuit, then Lightface. They ramp up to full attack speed of 40 kilometers per hour, all following this one target. He's strong, but he can't seem to pull ahead. He flees toward a line of trees along the stream bed, where he might have a chance of escape. But then, inexplicably, he swerves back, right into the path of the dogs. It is a fatal error. There are no second chances. pack have executed a picture-perfect hunt. It might seem like a simple chase and tackle, but it's much more. 
they've managed to catch an animal that's bigger, stronger, and faster than they are. That took a good battle plan and the skill to capitalize on critical factors from the beginning. The Impala were distracted by the rut when the dogs arrived. Competing males split the large herd into several smaller groups. Did this give the dogs the advantage? When they enter the flight zone of one group, the Impala spook. This sets off a chain reaction from group to group. Fragmented as they are, the herd still reacts as one. Any discord within the herd evaporated in the face of danger. The Impala's distraction and lack of vigilance were not factors. Instead, the Xi'an pack faced a long endurance chase, and that's exactly what these dogs were built for. As the pace of the hunt intensifies, the dog's physical adaptations begin to play a key role. Once they've targeted the slow-moving male, they shift into high gear. A dog's body stores a reserve of oxygen-carrying red blood cells. Running triggers the release of these cells into the bloodstream. The turbo boost of oxygen prevents muscle fatigue. So the dogs can keep running, even as their quarry begins to tire. When they catch up to the target, experience and instinct tell them how to handle it. They don't bunch up close around the prey. That would make it too easy for the antelope to escape. Instead, they fan out, operating a kind of zone attack. The Impala evades one dog, but it runs into the zone of the other. With all dogs working in tandem, they launched the critical tactic, isolation. They herd the Impala away from the others, out on its own. It explodes toward the grove of trees along the stream bed. But now it's alone, on unfamiliar ground. Instinct tells it to turn back and rejoin the safety of the herd. The dogs appear to understand this. They form a wedge between the male and its herd mates, pushing him further toward the stream until instinct takes over and he swerves directly into the dog's path. But the question remains, a big male Impala should have been strong and fast enough to escape. So why did he seem to weaken and slow? As it turns out, this hunt was decided before it began. He was a young male eager for his first chance to breed. For the past two weeks, he had devoted his attention and energy to jousting other males and pursuing females. The endeavor left him exhausted. He had little stamina left for a five kilometer endurance run. Victory at the mating game came at the highest cost. On the stream bank, the Xi'an pack finally claims its prize. Always with order and speed, and always followed by freeloaders. With each hunt, they have become closer, more in tune with one another, and better at working as a team. Light phase is the last to leave. 
vultures take care of the rest. The victorious hunters arrive with their bellies full of food to share with their wounded packmate, the puppy sitter, and the ecstatic pups. The little ones are one meal closer to surviving into adulthood. In about two months, they will join the adults on the hunt. Then they will begin to hone the skills and strategies that make their kind one of the most successful predators on Earth. Those that survive will increase the Xi'an pack's foothold at Umfolozi. Given enough space and a fighting chance, wild dogs will reclaim a place on the African landscape. They have the skills and the strategy to succeed. Most importantly, they have each other. <laughs>